we had like a slight instance of like I actually felt bad because he was trying to like tell me the steer and I was like, Ryan. I was like, I don't even think you necessarily you believe what oh, you're telling no. me right Most now. Most of the things I say, I don't actually believe. Yeah. But I was talking to Peter like when we went climbing, like just because I don't believe it's more fun. Like yep. sometimes it's just fun. The world's fucked up enough. Like it's just fun to think aliens are real. One of my like, friends, why not? I do think aliens are real. Yeah. One but of like my in friends Miami? keeps telling me that birds are fake and they're just like government. Yo, yeah, I've never seen a bird I'm sleeping. So in, that's it. I'm so in on that. Remember that time Dude, when the I government? I can't tell like, if she's joking or not. No, that's no, no. Remember that time when the government shut down for like a week? Did you see a bird? No, you didn't, because they were all at the well, White House recharging. That's why the government shut down. We need to demonetize on YouTube. All the all the zero dollars <laughs> I was gonna make right now. The <laughs> other thing. Money. Other thing I've heard is, uh, have you ever seen your neighbors bring in groceries? Oh yeah, a lot of stuff is coming up like that. Where yeah. it's like we live in a simulation. <laughs> Nothing's real. I feel like I see anyway, people bring groceries all the time here. I do too. I don't. <laughs> my my neighbor have. across the street is always bring groceries in. My neighbor across the street gets their groceries like delivered, like by like Uber Eats or whatever. So hell yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, good money. Episode 54. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> episode 54. Possibly episode 53. So this is my first time like banking an episode officially. I've generally been good about like releasing stuff like next day, two days after. And this will be the first time that we're delaying just a tiny bit because I got busy. I got life happening. Yeah. And I need to get some episodes done <laughs> before my life gets too busy. Yeah. So no episode happens. 54, I think possibly 53 if I fuck up or if someone cancels in the middle of the week. And if they do, shout out to them. You fucked me. But... If they cancel, I'm coming back again. Oh, that's your yeah. punishment. And that's the other great thing. I think I think you're the first three timer here now. No, I think you've had Jay three times. I thought so, but I think I've only had him like technically twice, and then once was on like the before the uh, before era. Know. So I'm not sure. So you're either the first or you're joining Jay or someone else that I'm forgetting about. And I'm gonna feel terrible. How many about. times has Sean been on? I think twice. Oh, damn. Uh, and again, these are all I thinks. And if I'm wrong, Let's it's going to be real embarrassing and real fucked Let's up for go. me. I should know this, too, because I listen to all the episodes, but it's fine. Shout out, my man. More people need to be like Ryan. Yeah. Um, before be we dive like into me. stuff. So before we dive into things, uh, first things first, change with show, February 10th, Wallingford. Go see the boys. Punch go. Peter in the face. <laughs> Punch Peter in the face, yes. <laughs> going right back to the last episode. Right where we left off here. JK's not going to be there. Uh, more importantly here is a new Blind Euphoria collection is currently out. Yes, uh, so we are releasing this Monday. So hopefully the collection came out Friday, assuming that nothing happened in the universe and the yeah. internet oh didn't boy. go down. Be there. All went well. It's no more there now. patches, drama, or whatever <laughs> happened. Dude. Yeah, I mean, it'll be there. Everything has a hiccup yeah. every time we've done anything with this. So it's been a hiccup. So we've already done the hiccup. Fire. So there's no way something Fire. can come up. <laughs> Again. I love his optimism. I'm not convinced, but I love his optimism. We already did all the hiccups. For starters, what is in the new collection? Or I guess, for starters, where do people go to buy it? And then what is in it? Yeah, give me a, a 10 second sales pitch. All right, 10 second sales pitch. So we are Blind Euphoria. We are a clothing brand preaching just like good vibes, essentially. The world sucks enough. This is more than 10 seconds, but I don't care. Time's not real. Um, so <laughs> we're off to a flying start here, boys. Yeah, we're just, we're really about trying to just like, uh, be happy, try to like find things to be happy about. Hell yeah. Things that are in this new brand. We've got two new shirt designs. We've got two beanies. We've got sticker packs. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find it at blindeuphoriaco.com or blindeuphoriaco on Instagram mm-hmm. and buy it. And that's about Perfect. it. Perfect. Go buy stuff. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So go buy stuff. Uh, my little my little plug here uh, is I've got an exciting year coming up. So whoever's listening, I'd love to add you to it. If you need a music video, if you need something band related, hit me up. Let's get some some visuals made for you. And cool. Yeah. Leave a like. Leave a comment on the show. That's always helpful. Do it. Uh, make me feel good about myself. Anywho. Do it. Blind you for it. So, Josh, I'm starting with you. Dude. Take me back All to right. the start here. So my I know what Blind you for you is currently. Yeah. Where does this thing start? Where does the idea of a clothing brand come in? Like, I feel like, yeah, when we're six years old, you're banging on pots and pans. That's where <laughs> drums or music would have come in. But yeah, where does the clothing line kind of get introduced into this world? So I want to say since I was about 15, I've always wanted to do something related to clothes, like whether it be shirts, beanies, whatever. Um, didn't seem like anything financially possible yeah. when you're a teenager. Sure. You know, you have money. It takes a lot of money to print stuff. Didn't do anything of it. And then once you get into bands and your bands get merch, you kind of start to see the process. And you're like, mm-hmm. the way that bands get merch is the exact same way that you can get merch as like a clothing brand. Yep. So uh, it was an idea I had for a while. Um, wanted to do it. Didn't want to do it alone, though. And me Why and... Not? uh I felt that for me, the first time I tried to do it, I was like 23 and I had an idea, had everything lined up and you put a guitar in front of me, I can make you a song. You put a pen in front of me. 
I can draw you a stick figure. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized that like I'd always have to have someone else outsource like the pictures for me, which like is fine, but it didn't feel as authentic to me if it wasn't coming from like my hands or like my team, if you will. Sure. So um, I put it on hold for years and then uh well actually to be honest like a year later i ended up meeting ryan and we instantly clicked uh and it was music related like i met him the first show i was playing with a band that i had just joined we instantly became friends i i fronted a song for his band that night after that, only knowing him for an hour that just um, came up on like my facebook memories did it yeah. yeah like it just came up i, like I fronted an all-time ago. low cover for him um we instantly became friends. We sent stuff all the time. And I was like, oh, he is creatively the exact same as me. He just his brain doesn't shut off. He just always wants to like do stuff. And one day when like 2019 or so that I text him, I saw the text and it was this long text. And I was like, dude, I can't sleep. I am at the end of my rope. I'm like, just feeling like I'm going nowhere. Like we have to stop putting our destiny in front of in someone else. Like, let's just do it ourselves. Like we never wanted yeah. to work nine to fives and like, we still technically do to some degree, but like we just kind of had the idea of like, you, he's the one who's like really good at design and things like that. And then I had like, you know, finance and like management background. And I was like, we could do this. Like, even yeah. if it, you know, fails, unless we do it, it will never know. So I texted him this long thing and we kind of got going on ideas of like, okay, let's try this and just see what happens. And that's sort of the origins of it. Honestly, is me just texting him at like five 30 in the morning when I couldn't <laughs> sleep. Cause I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life anymore. And yeah, that was, that was the start of it. I, I want to get to this five 30 AM text, but first, where do we meet? <laughs> I want to know the story of, yeah, fronting an all time low cover. <laughs> yeah, 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 did yeah. I hear that right? So, did I just dream? Yeah. Did I yeah. hallucinate for a moment in the middle of that? No. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, that happened. So, uh, before change was before war, yep. Josh and I were in separate bands. Mm -hmm. Um, I was playing in a band called Souter. We were friends with a band called Novelty, who picked Josh up as a guitarist. And he was like 13 at the time. No, we were like oh, no. 25. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, like, oh. I've known Ryan for about it's like 10 over years. nine years. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like yeah. 10 years In now. Between nine, 10 years. So yeah, yeah. yeah we're like 24, oh, like okay. 25. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was about to little middle school. <laughs> <around. laughs> no, 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 no. This, this makes is full feels like I've known him my entire life. It's full grown adults playing all time low. Like leave me alone. Yeah. Um. So we were playing. We had met, and then we we're like, we were already good friends with the, with the dudes in Novelty, and they're like, oh, we got this new, we got this new guy, like you got to meet him. We're like, cool. We called, I think new, we, I think new we called Josh. you new guy Josh for like a month. Yeah, like <laughs> new guy Josh. Because it's this new guy Josh, because you were the newest person like in our little like subset group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was there even another Josh? No, no, no. 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 Was Literally one. just new guy was Josh. The only one. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we met him, and we were talking. We we're like, yeah, like we're just shooting the show. We're like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we play. This all time low. We play what coffee shop? I think coffee yep. shop soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Huge. We we're covering that in our set, um, and he was like, "Oh, dude, I love all time low." And we're like, "Sure, do you want to fucking sing it?" We had never. We were, I think, opening the show. Like we had never seen this guy perform. We didn't even know if he could sing. We we're just like, "Yo, do you want to just do it?" Who was your singer at the time? So we were a three piece band. So we did the whole blank. We had a two like basses and guitars both sing. I feel Shout like if Dan, I am out. getting ready to open a show and I'm getting ready to sing Coffee Shop Coffee Shop Soundtrack by All Time Low, and then my bandmates go, "Hey, actually, he's gonna be the one." Singing. No, there was only three <laughs> of like us, and we were off. so like just like whatever. <laughs> okay, that like we were going for it. Like we covered, we used to cover the fun song by, huge, by SpongeBob. By SpongeBob yep. Yeah, like, and it was the best part of our set. Yep. Can, can I stop you for one second? Just I, I, the funniest thing about that is when they said that the band Fun was gigantic, and I was like, "Oh, what song by Fun do they cover?" Like, so oh I'm, no! After I sing the the the, the all time low song, that I'm like, "Which one's it gonna be? Like tonight or any of that?" And I'm standing yep. there and I hear "F is for friends." It's and I, quite and literally the fun song. I all the color from my face like just left, and I yeah. was like. SpongeBob. SpongeBob, SpongeBob fun. It was great. Oh, that's an interesting. I saw that too. Hand. Yeah. Probably should have formatted the card before this. We're going to take a quick pause here, folks, <laughs> <laughs> and be right back. Uh, Commercial we're break. To do this. Insane. Excuse me. Dude, right when we come back. Yes. Um, 
Hell yeah, I Kings. Shout right. out. Uh, I guess if you're listening to this, you probably have no idea what the fuck just happened. If you're watching this, you <laughs> definitely saw us go black for a second there. <laughs> so my bad. Turns out my SD card was full. So we got another SD card. We're cooking here. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about covering. We're talking about the fun song. Yes, <laughs> and all, all the color leaving my face. Yes. And then, yeah, them starting the SpongeBob yeah. song. So I'm sorry, but continue, it was, Ryan. It was sick, dude. Like, it was a really fun thing of our set because they, Matt and Dan, would do, not change with Dan, different Dan, um, would do, like, the whole banter, like, the whole skit from the thing. And it was sick. Like, we would end Sick a, fun word, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> sick. No, it was. Um <laughs> We would end a song and we'd be like, I don't think we're having fun. Like, what is fun? And they'd be like, well, what? And we would literally, I'd count in and we'd play the fun song. Super tight. Everybody loved it. <laughs> it would get a circle pit every time. That's what I'm saying. Like, it would get a reaction. It did mm-hmm. exactly what it was supposed to there do. There is something there. I, if I were to start a local band tomorrow, I would include two or three covers in my six song set because I feel like it's we just would a cheat play code like for nine. engagement or audience interaction. And yeah. like, we yeah, would it's play the best like way nine songs in a set yeah. because I didn't play to a click and I play really <laughs> fast if I don't play to a click. So we were able to just truck through. Yep. Like a good 17 songs and a half hour. Jesus. Nah, not really. But yeah. yeah. So we meet playing these wildly perfect songs. Yeah. And there's a text at 5.30 that comes in. So I guess um, what is your, when you receive this text, is you are you like, who the fuck is this crackhead texting me at 5.30? Oh, no, no this is way like, later. Like, so yeah. we, okay, the, okay. we're in we're in war at this point. Like, yeah. I've, we've had like three bands in between this. Like, I've known yeah. Josh for probably like eight years. So I get a text at 5.30 and this is nothing new. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, this is actually completely normal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like part of the routine, yep. we're both just like having existential crises, and it's like Constantly. his turn basically. So <laughs> he texts turn. me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "All right, it's cool, sounds good." Literally, I think every time Josh has sent me like I have this idea, it's just been like a big paragraph explaining everything, and then I do read all of it, and then I just go, "Word, I'm in." <laughs> like no, like yeah, return <laughs> thing. It's just like cool. No, somewhat facetious. He actually sends the hell yeah brother meme of, oh, of yeah, uh, Hulk Hogan playing guitar. That's actually what he sends. I did go through a phase where I was doing that a lot. Yeah, fire. Yeah, with the f- American flag in the background. Yeah. Fire. And then so from there, uh, so now you have the graphic design background, so I assume that's what you're bringing to the table here, so you're kind of coming with the ideas, and then Ryan can come in and help you bring those ideas to life. Is that kind of the initial arrangement here? I, I think we're probably f- like 50-50 on design-wise. We have yeah, the same yeah. idea, but when it comes to like the actual designing, he's – doing all of that and then like i'll handle all of the the unfun stuff like the the money and things like that because to me i don't know how my brain works i love organizing and things like that so to me seeing receipts and things like that i'm like yes i love this information yeah and it's perfect because i don't (laughs) yeah it's perfect okay little yin and yang that everyone needs yeah yeah Yeah. Uh, and then when does the first like collection start to come together so i assume like is the name the next thing that happens do you guys come with the design like how does this thing start to snowball and become what it is now yeah we went through a couple iterations, like, mm. back and forth. Like, a couple, like, not missed starts, but, like, attempts. It starts with different names and different vibes and things. And nothing really was sticking. Is or, like, it was something that was now? already taken. Well, we didn't know what it was going to be at first. Yeah, at, yeah. You know, we had... um I have it somewhere. The blind euphoria. The initial idea was uh, we actually had our own like mascot. It was like yeah. that was gonna be the idea. Was like like Spitfire or mm-hmm. um, like World Industries. You know they had like yeah. Wet Willie and everything. Yeah. Um, and it was a, a little Grim Reaper dude, and he was adorable. And we were gonna go that route when it was gonna be more of like a skate brand, yeah, like a skater type vibe. Yeah. And then we transitioned i don't even remember like we had the grim reaper before we had the name really too yeah that was the we were like we wanted a, a cute grim reaper because the the whole duality of like this smiling little like bringer of death basically yeah <laughs> yeah he's just like this little cute little guy mm-hmm. I um like that. yeah and then we had gone through like maybe one or two names i think like headway was the name but that's like a mental health app now like yeah. so that was the thing and we mm-hmm. had a couple different ideas and then I remember, I don't remember what it was, but I remember when we came up with Blind Euphoria, we were just, I was at Josh's house. We were probably just writing like for war. I actually do remember or it. Or something. Exactly. I remember, I don't remember exactly. So you can jump in, but like, yeah. I remember we were writing for war and the loose concept is that you probably came up with like a riff or something that I really liked. And so like, when I get excited about something, I'll just say stupid things, which is basically, I guess I'm excited all the time because I always say stupid things, but like more than, more than normal. And you, like, questioned it because I definitely came up with some weird, like, metaphor or something. And so I was just like, well, I'm sorry that in, like, my blind euphoria, I just said whatever. And then we both stopped. And it was like, hang on. Hang on. (laughs) Got it. Like, the light bulb went off. We are like, that'd be a sick Mm -hmm. brand name. So we rolled with that. 
and yeah, we just went went forward with with doing that. We came up with like like a pseudo American traditional kind of like with the dagger in the eye and everything, mm-hmm. like kind of doing an American traditional style concept, but like really clean, sharp, like streetwear line, like really crisp rather than like a hand drawn thing. Yep. So kind of bringing like a streetwear vibe, combining it with like the American traditional that you see a lot of bands, a lot of brands like in our like area, like area of art doing and kind of just like mashing those up together and going from there. That was also my favorite tattoo style as well, which is right. like covered all over my body. So I was like <laughs> yeah. American traditional. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Good. <laughs> Naming stuff always sucks. That's like one thing that with the show I've always gone back and forth on. It's like, I didn't know what to name it. And the first iteration was going to be the, the Peter JT show. And very quickly to me, it was like, Oh no, that's not me at all. Like I'm, I recognize that I'm the hostess. I recognize that this is my thing, but like it doesn't feel like it's my show. I'm not the one performing here. My goal is to bring other people and let y'all be the performers and let me <laughs> kind of soak up all the wisdom from it. Uh, was Blind Euphoria like it, it's interesting and then it, like immediately clicked? Is there any like doubts there? It sounds like maybe the styling was kind of the part two of that, where it sounds like the the name kind of took pretty quick, and then it was a matter of like you know what are what is Blind Euphoria was kind of the next question. Yeah, I, so we. In coming up with a name, we had been texting each other back and forth, and I remember telling Ryan at one point, I was like, it's like a band name or anything else. We're just going to have to – it's going to hit. Like, at some point, we're just going to say it or something, and it's going to be there. Once we had that, I feel like the direction of where we wanted to go was a lot easier because once we had the name, figuring out kind of, like, what we wanted to do was a lot easier. I think Ryan from the get-go had, like, the idea of, like – like, drink more water and, like, uh, do better, be better. I was, like, thinking we're like, oh, you know, maybe we should, like – just be more positive than we were expecting. Because, like, if you mm-hmm. listen to, I mean, now Chain Twist, yeah. uh, you wouldn't think that, like, <laughs> we're these, like, super posy people or anything. Yep. But And we're not. No, we're not. But, <laughs> but, but, like, this is our attempt. But that's the whole point. Yeah, like, we're not. That was the most Eeyore. Like, yeah. we're, not. we're not. That's okay, because I'm a total Pooh Bear if he's Eeyore. Like, that, honestly, that is, I, just honestly, wa- I, just yeah. wa- I just watched Meckle of Honey. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we were like, we're not super positive people in the sense of like how we view the world but like maybe we just need to bring a little bit more into it even if we're not in our lives very like positive about ourselves there is some fake it till you make it involved and i think yeah yeah, it's almost like in in a way like yeah it's for other people like it's almost a reminder for ourselves Mm -hmm. really where it's like hey like you're allowed to be happy because i feel like a lot of it like it's cathartic. Yeah, like it's cathartic in a way. A lot of the times I feel like with everything that's going on, like the, you don't see positive things happen. Like yep. no one puts that on the news. No one really wants because that doesn't sell or anything like mm-hmm. that. But like, so it's really hard to justify being happy in a way because sure. you're like, oh, there's so many people that have way worse than me and all these different things. So it's like almost just a reminder. Yep. They're like, you're allowed to smile. Like you're allowed to be happy. Like yep. try to like make other people happy. Like how can you positively affect the world kind of how we left off the last episode with you i mean where it's just like how can you affect someone else's life in a positive way where they're going to feel just a little better yep yeah and not necessarily needing a reason for that like because i feel like that's a lot of things like well, what do i have to be happy about i'm like dude just do it like try yep. like coming from someone like we both like deal with you know mental depression anxiety like whatever it is mm-hmm. so like it's not as easy as just waking up and like, I'm going to be happy today. Yep. But like sometimes like if you just fake it till you make it and like Mm -hmm. try and you're like, I'm going to try to do like this one thing and that's going to make me feel better. Like, so it's just getting kind of like a little jump start and reminder of like, you know, you, this is valid and like you're allowed to, feel happy if you want yep. to and you don't need a reason I've for that got the same thing and I, I yeah i guess it's a different flavor but for me again yeah coming back tying it to my my overlap here with the show it's like something from everyone is the idea of like yeah you can learn something from everyone which is partly me telling myself like hey don't be so hard-headed and fucking dumb like uh, <laughs> there's a part of me that thinks like i've gotten here by being hard-headed right like by when you come to me with an idea like you don't want me being like maybe this maybe that like you want me to be like this is what it's going to be and this is why that's the best version of it. Like I and I feel like part of being self-employed is being stubborn. It's this idea of like this shouldn't work, but I'm going to keep figuring this fucking shit out and I'm going to make it work. I'm going to force myself to make it work. And there's a, a hard-headedness in there that is rigid and kind of native to me and I think part of my I don't know, I like people, but I'm often bad at being like 
yeah, even if I don't love everyone, there's something from everyone that is valuable to me. And there's some overlap. And even if me and this person don't see eye to eye on everything, there's something they're doing well that I can learn from. And it doesn't, and I guess that's kind of my, my mecca challenge for the show is like, I've kind of only had friends on to this point. Yeah. And there is some like down the road goal of like, can I have on someone that I completely disagree with? Can I have like my, my nemesis on here and sit across them and go, I don't like you. I don't like the way you do business. I don't like what you've done to people and who are my friends. Explain but like, yourself. What can, what have you done well? And I think that's, I think everyone, I think that's true of the, uh, when I'm delivering food in New Haven, when I'm driving by a homeless guy. It's like, there's some part of my brain that wants to stop and be like, we're in very different spots in life, but like, yeah. there's something you know that I don't. And there's 100%. some valuable in there that I can, I can draw from that. And I guess there's some, yeah, some ego in, even in that. But it's like, I don't know. It's a... Uh, I resonate with this idea of trying to create a brand of like, this isn't quite me yet, but it's something I want to be. It's like an aspirational version of myself right. that exactly. we're trying to create here. Yeah. Um, and so I re yeah, empathize with that with the blind euphoria thing. And I'm, uh, I'm curious then, it's like, it, does it, it does it feel natural, I guess? So when I'm starting this, again, there's a, a sense of me being like, am I too egotistical to learn something from everyone? Like, can I really sit here and pick, pick your brain for an hour? And the answer has been yes. The answer is that I've loved it. And it's been a really fun process for me to get to sit down and like ask all the questions that I want to ask that aren't like socially kosher to ask in the middle <laughs> of a venue or whatever. Uh, but it's been a really fun challenge. So then for you guys, does blind euphoria become, does it feel cheesy at first? Does it feel natural? Is it something that like you uh, assimilate into immediately? Or is there kind of a growing pain there of like, I think this is what I want it to be, but I'm, it isn't quite me yet. I think well, the thing with it, it was that always with anything creative, when you're throwing yourself out there, there's always that thing of, am I coming across as disingenuous yeah. or cheesy or anything like that? And because no one really saw me and Ryan probably as like these super uplifting people, you yeah. know, it might seem a little bit odd at first to see us trying to like bring that kind of message across but to be honest i've kind of grown to like not care about what people think mm -hmm. and, I, and i know that's like so cliche to say but just once you go through high school i feel like everyone at, gets that hard skin at some point you know yeah. and i just when you're so used to like putting music out and seeing like either people love it or they hate it you kind of just become numb to like i don't really care what people think anymore and, yep. and you become your best self when you do that yep. so i remember us like writing out the mission statement we were kind of thinking about like this is genuine to us does it seem cheesy maybe do we care no not really yep. and that was one of our things too is like we're gonna do it our way like we're gonna do this every drop that we do is is limited it's we never do a design again it, so like everything that we're doing is going to be us and if it's not us there's no reason to do it and if people think it's cheesy maybe it's cheesy if people think it's badass cool awesome e yeah. either way it's us fail or succeed like we did it some people sit yeah. their entire lives being like i wish i just did this one thing oh, yeah. and they don't so i mean we talked a little briefly about last time i was here the dark cloud of bad luck that has followed <laughs> us ever since i yes. mean I, I don't know if we were going to get into it later but literally we dropped the brand and it was so good for like the first two months and then the world ends with yep. covid yeah like not even we literally dropped i think it was march 8th 2020 <laughs> first cases of covid were and then right march away. 14th yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. it was they were like yeah we don't world anymore yeah like, we, go we didn't even know like can we ship stuff like yeah it, like it, we had no clue what yeah. to do like or how to do or anything we so we can't accept like, well, the turns you know yeah like, exactly so we were like okay well yeah. sick here we go my i my first year being fully self-employed was january 2020 that was like my i graduated college and i got my degree in psychology that i knew i wasn't <laughs> going to use but i needed to yeah i wanted to have something on paper of like if this doesn't go I'm well smart. then at least like, i have something yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah get the get the family on my side also i think he's an important <laughs> piece there mm -hmm. um but yeah, January 2020 is the first thing. And then yeah, three months in, it's like, maybe yeah, not. Maybe fucked, this universe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get fucked yeah. is exactly what it felt like and what it was. Uh, I also wanted to touch on quickly just like the the branding, the positivity thing. Because it's a similar thing that I've struggled with here of like, when I'm chatting with you guys, the part I should clip out is the most salacious part. Like I, anytime someone says sleep token, I should cut that out and put it on Instagram. And like the, whatever, good or bad, like, sleep use, token, sleep token. <laughs> like use that name. Or if, anytime we talk about Taylor Swift, like I should clip that and put it. But it's like mm. that's not – I don't want to be the guy who's talking shit. And also it's like there's so much – anytime we're talking about a band, we're talking about past bands, talking about how we got here. And any past band is a band that failed. 
And in that failure, there's always someone pointing a finger at someone. And uh, in any scenario, there's probably fingers that can be pointed a lot of ways. And I don't want to be on here being like, Ryan, tell me what happened with your last band when it's like the other band might have something to say about Ryan. Like, I don't want to just air out Ryan. But the salacious salacious thing of Ryan, I don't know anyone, but just use you as an example of Ryan being like, yeah, this person stole money from the band. It's like, that's the clip I should put out. That is Mm -hmm. the one that will get the most engagement. That is the one that will fuel social media the most. But like, yeah, I don't want to just be spitting out people talking shit about other people. And I would rather build something where we're the clips that go out are us talking positively about something or laughing or enjoying each other. But like, I get that that's not monetizable in the same way or in the context of a thumbnail. It's like, I should do it. I try and do it all smiling and looking good. What I should do is when we're looking dumb, when someone does something dumb with their hands, like the thumbnail face that we always see on YouTube. uh, Has it been tough then to like accept positivity as the brand? Like it seems like you guys have done a good job. Obviously, yeah, Blind Euphoria, there's Happiness Britain in the name. But like, yeah, there's a, it'd be much easier to lean into the Reaper side of it than the cute Reaper side of it, I think, is what we're trying to get at here. I I mean, mean, we kind of like, this is kind of like a restart. Yeah. So I don't think we know. Sure. Right now, like we we launched in 2020 and had like the little amount of like hype from our friends and stuff that we got and a little bit of traction and it kind of all went away because of COVID, because of COVID yeah. and because of hiccups that happened with like the getting the shirts for the second thing and everything. So oh, I told that story last yeah, time. Yeah, I was yeah, here. I know, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I mean, we don't have to say it again. But like every time, we will. every we time should, we've yeah. tried to do it, like there's been some type of speed bump, some type of roadblock. So they, mm-hmm. and then after we bought the shirts for this drop, that's going to, that's out now. Like it's, we essentially started chain twist basically Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. that started happening. Yeah. So that took all of our brain power and all of our effort to get that off the ground. And it was always and money and money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Literally everything. So we're just like, okay, we'll just get back to it. We'll get back to it. Once chain twist is stable, we'll get back to, we'll get back to it. Mm -hmm. And chain twist is stable, but it's still building. So it was constantly like, you're never going to get back to us. So I remember yep. just texting Josh one day. I'm like, we just got to do it. We just have to do it right now. It doesn't have to be. At 5.30 a.m. You said yeah, 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 basically. Yeah, actually, it was, yeah, it was like 6.15 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this time, plots was, it was because I woke up at 16, not because I didn't go to bed yet. Yeah. Um, I hadn't gone to bed yet. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, we were like, oh, for this thing, we're going to do this big comeback. We're yeah. going to get like pictures of everybody like that we like consider part of like our family like the team are going to get promo shoots from everybody so we have all this content Mm -hmm. it to like kind of carry us and then i was just thinking about it and it's just like you know what like this is basically a complete restart no one really knows about this for the most part unless like you're like close to us and like Mm -hmm. knew previously from three years ago Mm -hmm. we haven't really posted on the instagram just because again it's all been chained to us it's all been our own personal stuff yeah like so there's no expectation. There's no bar that we need to meet. There's no, there's no rush. There's no need to do this big spectacle of a thing. Yep. Let's just do it. Just put it up. Just like make a post. Be like, oh, by the way, if you want shirts, here you go. They're up. Like yep. it doesn't have to be this. Like, oh, in a week we're gonna drop because no one knows who this is. No one cares, for lack of a better term. Yep. Like so, it's all of just like, oh, we need to just do it. Just put it out and go from there and hope that we can kind of build everything up. I can't, uh, I couldn't agree more. And my, my version of that is always like, I send a band a music video. And with that, I send you clips. We get behind the scenes photos. And there are so many times where all those things see the light of day before the video does. Right. And it's like, by the time the video comes, everyone's tired of seeing this background. No one cares about this performance anymore. Yeah. Like it's all just numbness that we're, in, uh, I don't know, feeling encountering, I guess was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, so I guess with you guys, yeah, it's been really smart just to kind of pause. And it's like, when this thing is out, then we can start talking about it. Then we can start rolling it out and really promoting it more. But yeah, while we don't have anything on the cutting edge, it's, yeah, it's silly to kind of get ahead of the storm in that sense. Yeah. Right. Um, take me to these dilemmas. Yeah. So 2020, the world shuts down. We had some momentum. Uh, yeah. You mentioned being scared to send packages, which I think is an interesting, like, bla- well, blast in the past. Yeah, like, so yeah. Hard no to one knew with, what. Yeah. We were like, yeah. are we allowed to mail things? Yeah. Like, yeah. what can we do? Like, literally everything stopped. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I handle all of the, the shipping stuff. And that was that was another thing, too, was one of our initial ideas was, like, I I write, like, a little letter to everyone who buys from us, like, oh, yeah. like a little handwritten letter, like, thanking them and everything. And I want it to be very personal. And now I'm like, crap. Like what? Are, like what are we gonna do? Because we're shipping. Like we've shipped to Japan, we've shipped to Canada, and I'm thinking like we can't accept returns. Obviously, it's COVID, and um, and I don't know if I have something, and I don't want to give it to someone, you yeah. know. 
so that was a hard thing at first to try and like, how can we safely send a package? So that was like the first hiccup right after we got going. And every package came with a COVID test. <laughs> basically. And <laughs> before they were the out, it was a limited edition exclusive. Yeah, yeah. We just yeah. sent everybody like a popsicle stick. <laughs> yeah, so so we were doing we were doing all of that and it was still everything, you know, it, it was slowing down because of the COVID stuff, but we were still, you know, it was yep. hard to ask people to spend money on something when people around you are dying. Like, I know we don't yeah. like to, t- it, it's a no bad one dream work. now at this yeah, point. Yeah, like but, everybody was on unemployment, like people yeah. were literally like losing yep. their lives. We're like, before government checks. We're like, oh, but like, <laughs> yeah. sorry, but like, we have shirts that you should buy. Like, and oh, that, yeah. that was so hard to try and, and portray that, you know, I don't want, it wasn't like a fake thing, but like having photos of us out somewhere wearing the shirts, like modeling for it. I was like, yeah, it was the tough. The like world is, is like ending right now. Yeah. And we're mm-hmm. trying to get people to buy t-shirts and it felt so wrong. So yep. we kind of were sort of like, let's, let's take a step back for a little bit and kind of see like what happens with the world. And in that time, the band that we had been working for, for years, like ended up stopping essentially because of covid like we couldn't yeah, get together anymore yeah. and it was very deflating so that was a really bad time of the clothing brand we spent all this time trying to work on now out of respect we feel like we shouldn't really be pushing it because yeah people should be spending money on other stuff and then also the thing so that creative outlet's gone now our other creative outlet's gone because everyone is like hey we probably shouldn't be getting together even though we are you know, healthy. Mm-hmm. We probably yeah. shouldn't be doing that. And yep. now and like we're not making no shows music. or anything. So now it's yeah. just like everything just went away. Oh yeah. yeah. And that was the first hiccup. And then when the world started slightly coming back and we figured, okay, like round two, let's go. And we decided to make the shirts and have them made with the same people that we had the last ones. And we had the hiccup that I explained last time of, you know, a six month wait or so. And we get the old designs and not the new designs that we ordered. And they try to kind of hold us up of like, well, you, you, you're going to buy these shirts from us, right? Yeah. Like no, you, you can keep the mess ups if you buy them Yeah, or like bring them back or whatever. And, like, and I, I tried like... to explain to them like we do limited releases. We don't reprint stuff. Yep. And it was kind of just sort of like a, Oh, uh, like, like sucks to yeah, suck. Like we thing. messed up, but like, but figure you're somehow at fault, even though like, they, you yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And we're like, no. Like, uh, then when we finally got our shirts, um, it just taken so much mental. We were so deflated. Yeah, how did that, that result? Did you have to pay for the shirts? No, no. I think we just, yeah, Josh they, just brought them back. They, they, okay. they basically threw them away probably as a tax break. And sure. Uh, yeah, we don't know what happened to them. But we if, don't if, if, I, if I say the punchline of my joke, I think people will figure out what company we're talking about. So I don't so want to yeah, say it. So I, I won't say it. it. All I know is that karma is a bitch. That's all I'm going to say <laughs> in the best way possible for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the the ending of of what end up happening with them is hilarious and, and rightfully so. Um, <laughs> I look forward to hearing that after we yeah, wrap up I, here. I can't yeah. wait to tell you that yeah, after. Yeah. yeah. But so that happened. So we're just basically sitting on these shirts and trying to figure out because the funny thing is we when we started just to dial back real quickly yeah, yeah. we both went in with how much is it going to be for the amount of shirts we want to do it was like under 500 dollars. so okay let's each put 250 in what else do we need okay we're gonna get stickers we're gonna do this right budget it out we went positive as yeah, a like company we, we were within in the three green. months yeah, we, and like, we were like this is fantastic so we can either consider it a success and just stop or we put all that money in plus some and this is why it hurt so much was because yeah. we, we we got better t-shirts. Yeah, we spent the money on the better quality. Like it's not it yeah. wasn't gilded in anymore. Front like we back like designs. Up. Yeah, we did I a mean, front back. Yeah, and it was a lot more money. And now we're spending the we every bit we made as a company mm-hmm. went into this because immediately right back in. Yeah, and so and then our own money again. too. Yeah, as it does. Yeah. So yeah, we were sitting on this for a while, and but we loved the shirts, and every friend we gave it to was like these are amazing shirts and like it feels so good yeah the like we were doing the beta testing and i was like sending out yeah. mock-ups and i'm like would you buy this like mm-hmm. what do you think and they're like yeah definitely do that so yeah like, and we were really we're, we're doing that. it like sounds good five people saying yes is enough for me to yeah. buy 30 shirts let's go <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah honestly too we were we kept saying when chain twist is self-sufficient we will get back to it and because our last band would like you know hey we released an ep let's go play a bunch of shows with chain twist it's just constant like we're writing recording whatever so there really wasn't a, a spot there's no downtime in chain twist no at all it's constantly 
we have this song, we need to go record it, we need to do a video, we need to find a time to play a show, but we also have four more songs that we also need to record and figure out time. Sure. So it's constantly and we love that over, too. And we love we, it. We it's love that best. aspect of it. Yeah, but then but it's Ryan, constant overlapping. Yeah. So Ryan said we did we just gotta like do it at some point. And then I yeah. wasn't even in my head, I was thinking like, when is this gonna come back? I don't know. And then you mentioning it to me when I came on the first time and you were like, Hey, I'm gonna talk to you about Blind Euphoria. I was like, Holy shit. I was like, that's cool. And then it reignited all of the sparks. So you're kind of like the 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 timber to to Hell blind yeah. for you coming like fi- yeah. this finally seeing the the light of day was yeah because we had it on our radar but yeah i remember like listening to their episode and i was like oh yeah we should probably just do it yeah and, like what do yeah. we like forget it let's just go the just do it element i think is the biggest part of any creative process and it's the biggest hurdle yeah. that i think most people get stuck on myself included got stuck on many a times and yeah ultimately that's it it's just just do it uh i guess i accidentally am segueing here of like mm-hmm. Uh, what gives you the confidence to start a clothing brand? And as I'm saying, just do it. Of course, talking about Nike, we're talking about Adidas, talking mm-hmm. about all the big wigs. And I guess, I don't know, somehow it feels different to music, to me at least, of like, just because Bring Me the Horizon exists doesn't mean that Chain Twist shouldn't exist. But somehow yeah. Nike is like a, we're never going to sell more shirts than Nike. So no. like, what motivates this as a, yeah, what motivates this as a venture that like feels worthwhile, I guess? And I, I think it is worthwhile. I'm excited to see you create it. But like, yeah. what motivates you guys to do it in the context of, yeah, clothing is such a competitive industry. And I don't think it's a industry where there's a ton of like, it's all about margins. I don't think the margins are that big generally. You have to sell a bajillion shirts to really make a living off of it. So where does this like get motivated from what makes this like a worthwhile pursuit for you i mean i'll, I'll let you know when i find out I guess. <laughs> I, to be honest our brain's not shutting off that's really yeah. what me it and, is me and ryan are like he was essentially my kindred spirit when i met him yeah. i was like this this dude gets me we literally have had maybe 30 minutes of talking and i already tell this dude is like he just get, he gets it you know yeah. he, he would push me and send me stuff like when we first met being like, hey, are you writing anything for for novelty? Send me clips. I want to hear like even before we're even in a band together, we're like, he was like, send me stuff. I want to hear what you're working on. I was like, shit, I better write some stuff so I can send it to Ryan and see if he likes it, kind of thing. Even though it wasn't my band, yeah. and then then I plied and schemed in my head to like, how can I get him in a band with me? And then he's been stuck with me ever since, and he's become one of my best friends. And that was kind of the thing of like us not being able to just always wanting to do something with our hands or be creative. Like that's where the clothing brand came from. It, musically we tried to add that stuff into our band but you could like a design by a band and maybe not like the band's music so we we're thinking from the perspective of we think we have some cool ideas for designs yep. it's more of a wide open framework of you don't have to like a, a music type or anything to like our clothes you can just like the design there's nothing else attached to it mm-hmm. um and it, really for me like i say it comes down to just being creative i i told you last time cameron like every guitar the guitar i use in chain twist i i made it like i you know I, everything that i do i like to have my own flair to our customization to some point and it comes to clothes too if no one's gonna make better clothes for me than myself and ryan so yep. you know if even if at the end of the day, if I was like, if I get like four or five cool shirts out of it, it's a win for me. You yeah, know? like we're 100 percent. We're not doing this for money. Like we no. know we're not going to be Nike. It's no. like cool. And this is just another outlet yeah. where like I just want to do something. I like being creative. I like creating things, something where I can just put stuff in front of people and be like, cool, I did this. Like yeah. this is just something that I've created and we have now. I always am uh, nervous about asking the why question because I feel like the – I feel like if someone's trying to read between the lines, I'd read between the lines of me going like, hey, don't do that. And I think the just for the sake of vulnerability there, I think for me, it's like, yeah, I have the same question of why. Of like, why should I make music videos? Like, there's plenty of people doing it. It's not like there's a, a need for someone. And yeah, I guess what I'm hearing you guys say that I think I overlap with is there's some part of me that went like, no, I can do it better. Like, I know what people are doing and I like what they are doing and that's cool that they're doing it. But like. I think I have something to contribute to this field. And I think what I'm hearing you say is like, yeah, I'm going to get five shirts out of this. And I don't know if other people are going to like them. But like, yeah, yeah. It's I think just there's like, a... This, yeah, this is something yeah. I want to do. So yeah. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Like, I don't need to be Nike or Adidas or whatever. Like, I just feel like doing this. And yeah. time is short. Yep. I'm just going to do it. I want to do it. Which I think was a, a huge shift for me growing up where, like, as a kid playing soccer, to me, it's like, I'm not playing soccer to be on the bench like i'm playing soccer to score the most goals yeah, to win yeah. the most trophies to get first place every time possible mm-hmm. and then like as the art thing starts to come it's like 
oh no, I'm not trying to make the best music videos. I just think I have value to offer to this thing or there's some part of me that is interested in this and engaged in this and there's a, yeah, I don't necessarily need a why. I have my own why of like, it just feels good. It feels like the right thing to do. Uh, and so I'm always curious, yeah, for other artists of like, yeah, what is what is the why there where it seems like we're in fields that are, um, I don't know, that we're in fields that it's like, there's plenty of people making plenty of money. Like, well, how am I going to challenge Bring the Horizon? What am I going to do to contribute to whoever the gods of music videos are it's like <laughs> maybe nothing but i don't really care that i'm not going to enter this arena like my my goal is to yeah affect the lives i can touch and the ones i can reach and i'm gonna have fun doing that and if it grows into the nike of music videos and great but like yeah. i think yeah it was a weird thing where as a kid it's like i'm not gonna play soccer if i don't think i can become the nike of this and now it's like no i'm so happy doing this and almost now like i almost hope i don't become that because it seems like it life gets shitty once you get to that size like it, it seems like we're in a real sweet spot now where like we have the respect of our peers we have the support of our peers and we don't quite have that next level of um uh, with the uh, bad omens leading to social media it's like to me that's like the 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 other end of this thing of like they've gone so far outside of their own circles that they don't even want to interact with people anymore because it's so daunting and so overwhelming um and i guess i don't know it's uh reinforcing for me to hear other artists be like no it's just this is for me it's not a uh, yeah as a as a businessman it's like yeah i recognize that i should pursue a business that's going to make me the most capital but like life isn't about capital it can't be about capital because we're going to be fucking miserable if all this is is a you can't a cash take grab. money when he dies so yeah, like, no. just do what makes you happy can't really take much when you die for that purpose no. but, yeah but yeah if you were, can't if take your friends with you unless yeah, you want to exactly. start a cult i mean you can yeah. um <laughs> But yeah, you can't you can't worry about it. You just got to do what, what yeah. you want to do and just go for it. Yeah. Um, going back, so then the first batch runs into this issue. The second batch, we have the people who yeah send you the old batch of shirts, and there's the whole mix up there. Yeah. Uh, is the designs you were trying to print that second time what is now coming out or what is yes. now currently out? Yep. So, yeah. the, so these designs, we've okay. had these shirts done, printed in Josh's house for two and a half years. Hell yeah, okay. Basically just been taking up space in okay. Josh's house. Yeah. So we've had these for a while. We've been excited on them. And now it's fun because, like we were saying, like we kind of not forgot about it, but just like pushed it to the side. And now it's like this yeah. whole new like rejuvenation of like, oh, yeah, we did this. Cool. Like we can get excited about this again. Yep. Yeah. Like I've been wearing the shirts we have like for for two and a half years just out and about. And people yep. are like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's my clothing brand, but I guess it's not available. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like it got to a point where I was at the the gym one time and one of my friends was like, "That's cool." And I'm like, "Did you just want one? Like, give and me." Then we 20. started selling them. Man. <laughs> we just started technically like selling Under them, the, like yeah, reselling the them yeah. or whatever. We're just like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, let me know. I'll just grab one." Yeah. So, but it's nice to finally, I guess, do it formally or mm -hmm. whatever officially and have everything be out. And we're talking about the shirts here. I think there's also the beanies included. So the beanies, a more recent edition, or they were all they were also included. The beanies in this. were but a last minute thought that I had had. Because I thought we could do them <laughs> easily, and I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal. Well, okay, no. To be fair, we have always done beanies in every band we've done. Because when I initially had the idea of doing beanies in like bands, I would get like wholesale beanies, mm -hmm. and we would go and like find like a patch or something, and like just I would hand stitch it. And then we had the idea of doing it like this but different actually we tried embroidered first that didn't work yeah. out joe has an embroidery machine because of course he does <laughs> of course he does i love side tangent about joe joe is the coolest person ever yep joe you never know what he's gonna do you never know what he's gonna buy uh, we had like a running joke where every week we would go and it would just walk in the door and be like, what did Joe buy this week? Because it'd be like a kayak or like literally the most random stuff. And I love it. It's so yep. cool. Yep. But he has an embroidery machine. So he's been embroidering all the chain twist merch that we have. Joe is all done. Like Joe mm -hmm. is done with his machine. So in my head, I'm like, oh, we can yep. buy blank beanies. I ask, I, Joe can embroider them. It'll be fine. Like, there's zero chance. And it was not fine. And it was <laughs> never fine. If you ever, in any facet of your life, going, nothing can go wrong, guess what? It will, It'll and find it a completely way. will. Yeah. So yeah. it's all like, yeah, we're good. So I have the beanie shipped to Joe's house. Just like, I got it, no problem. We digitized the file and everything. And he puts in our disco. He's like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like, I'm stressed. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Like, so I call him. He's explaining to me, like, well, we can do it one of two ways. One way it looks super professional, but like the needle starting, the needle starting to like blow out, and I don't know if it's going to be able to handle it. It's not going to look good because I can't restart it. And the other way, 
it'll finish it, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look very sharp or whatever. And it's just stressing me out. And I'm like, well, first of all, don't worry about it. This isn't you. Like, this isn't your thing. This is a me and Josh problem. (laughs) Like you are doing literally us a favor by offering to do this like for free because you're our friend. So like if this stresses you out, pause, we're done. Don't do it anymore. Like I will take care of this. Relax. So it became, all right, well, I, we bought beanies. We have these, we have to use them somehow. Well, it's just, I'm just like, we'll do patches. I'll get patches. We can iron them on. It'll be fine. And can't it be not. that hard. <laughs> and it was not fine. Yeah. Um, the getting the patches was easy. Like, cause Joe had sent me, he's like, oh, this band I know, they just got patched, like embroidery done. Go mm-hmm. to this guy. So Chris, it, Brass City, I think it is, Brass City Embroidery in Waterbury, um, did our patches. Um, I got them super quick. Everything is great. I'm like, cool, I'm going to go iron them on. Not fine. <laughs> I Google it. Because the internet has never lied to me. Not once. Not no. once has not it lied. About the not, Canyon. not once has the internet proved me wrong or like steered me in the wrong direction. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said that. Um, so we, I, I go and it says, "All right, now put the parchment paper over it so you protect like the the patch." I'm like, "Makes sense. Tracks got it." And goes, "Hold the iron down and go in like a circle motion for 30 seconds." And I'm like, "Seems like a lot, but again, the internet <laughs> is never wrong." So. I'm I'm circling and I'm circling and I'm counting to 30 Mississippi in my head. And I'm literally seeing like the knit beanie, like absorb all the steam in the water and like warping. Yeah. And I'm like, that's only gotta, been 28 I was seconds. Like, dude. I was like, it's going? gotta be fine. It's probably fine. It's something that like once it dries, it'll like go back. No, nah, didn't go back. No, yeah. The best part is though, is that when he sends it to me and was like, yeah, I was supposed to hold up for 30 seconds. I was like, no, no, you're not. Not for beanies. And <laughs> I knew that. But the thing is, I Googled, how do I iron on knit beanies? And it said, knit beanie, how to iron on? And I was like, thanks, wiki how. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me Google something else. This one didn't say circle. So I was like, oh, okay. So I just pressed and lifted it. And this was a white one. So there's like a burn mark that looks like the dude from Home Alone, <laughs> like of just the iron on yeah. the beanie. So I was like, <laughs> that's not the worst fashion idea is to no. make the home alone beanie. So no. I was, yeah, I was just like, I texted Josh. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. do this. So I had luckily already like had like an audible backup plan, like lined up. I texted my friend Vic who does like cosplay theater work, like all kinds of sewing and mm-hmm. everything, costuming, like his head jobs doing costume. They're great. Um, and I was like, Hey, what are the chances that like if this goes south at any point i want to do this would you would i be able to use your sewing machine and like kind of help like help me out and they're like yeah sounds good so i texted them in a panic and i was like ah uh, i like sent a picture i'm like i can't do this remember that thing you said you would help me like please and they're like yeah yeah no problem how many do you have and i'm like i have this many and they're like yeah give me like a week or whatever so they were able to so everything on, even with the iron on, because that was the first thing they were like, I really wish you didn't get an iron on back. And I was like, well, I thought I could be an adult, <laughs> yeah. but I can't. That, that I feel like is a good segue, though, to also state that, like, listen, persistence is is our at this point is yeah. like our thing. But we are not uh, void of realizing how lucky we are with some of the people around us. Like Joe has. Every photo, essentially, that's ever been done for um, for any of our product photos or our, like model photos has been done by him. Mm-hmm. Vic, like very graciously, helped s- us like out. did all the sewing for that. Ryan's friend Briley, who I become like cool with, she was like repping this stuff like on her streams when she was like in Japan, like constantly like being like, "Hey, this isn't out yet, but it's coming out," and like bringing people to us. And she brought a lot of people towards us, so, like. We are very lucky, even though with all the dark cloud that has yeah. followed us and like trying to like get this planted and like grow, yeah. we are very lucky by the people around us. We both have families that are cool with us, like trying things and you yeah. know being like, yeah, throw yeah, it against the wall, see about if it it and like, yeah, if that's what you're doing now, cool, yeah. like go for yeah. it. Yeah, we're it's technically me and Josh are like the faces of this, but we have like a very good support system. We've accumulated like you know the team. Yeah. Of like blind euphoria, which now involves you, yeah. which I guess I don't know how it's to. Like, a good I was going to say, actually, I was like, yeah. I guess I don't know how to like naturally do this, but like we, this is. We wanted to give you some, some stuff. Your stuff now. 
because we I'm want fly as hell. you to be a part of this as well. I feel like yeah. we should do one of those cool clap things where you clap and I'm just wearing all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I can't like, quite like, make big transition. Like, but, that would actually, hell yeah. yeah. That'd be a great this TikTok is transition. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, hell yeah. we have buy a, a beanie, huge folks. support system. Please, buy, yeah. buy some stuff. Um, and buy stickers. Yeah, sticker hell yeah. Packs. Stickers and a shirt. T-shirt. Hell yeah. That's only half of the drop, too. We just want one of the shirts. That's fire as hell. I'm going to wear that. I'm going to wear that hard as a rock. Um, I'm aware that on Tuesday, and it's going to be in the episode before this one, <laughs> just fuck up the whole timeline of the universe. <laughs> yeah, it's hell fine. Yeah, if the MCU could do it, we could do um, it. Like, it's fine. Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. What was my... I had a thought there, and you fucking disrupted me by being so generous <laughs> We and gave kind. you late Christmas, and oh, we ruined the podcast. I hate how your kindness disrupts my thinking It's pattern. almost like we have a <laughs> happiness, <laughs> kindness, clothing brand. <laughs> um, See, it's not fake people uh as you were talking about the support system and all i had the thought of like i don't know if i believe in karma but i mm -hmm. do believe that like i should do the right thing so the right thing happens to me right. and i know that is a karma it's like karma. i'm not really that spiritual i'm not really that religious and it i uh i feel like i'm pragmatic enough i'm dogmatic enough i'm uh scientific enough of like it doesn't make sense to me like i don't i don't believe that that is a a transaction of energy like it just doesn't mathematically make sense to me no the flip side there is like I do believe that people who are kind have more kindness coming back to them. And as you guys are talking about your support system, it's like, that's not an accident. That's a reflection of you guys being so supportive to these people. And I don't know exactly how you've supported each one of these people. And I don't know if it's exactly them that you've supported or maybe it was one of their friends, but like there is some like goodwill. And this sounds like, as you're describing the, the blind euphoria, uh, I ideology, it's very like altruistic. Like, I'm just going to do this because it feels right. It's good. I like it. I don't need other people's validation. I just, I want to do it because I want to do it. And it feels like the right thing to do. And I think as you put those things out in the universe, what comes back to you are more people who are in that same field here. So it's like, yeah. I, I'm hearing you guys sound very like selfless and humble of like, I don't know how these people got in my life. And my point is like, no, take some credit. Like you guys earned all these people in your life. And like by being good and doing good shit. And like someone like Joe is a great example of like, Joe wouldn't be helping you if you treated him like shit for years. Like <laughs> we go out of our way to like no, we're like I was like if Joe ever decided one day he's like yeah no we're like well that goes there goes everything like I have yeah. ever invested in because Joe has some type of hand in it. Like, yeah, but I, I assume if Joe was sitting here, I would say Joe, why the hell are you doing this? He'd be and like Joe, would just be like ah. I, maybe because he's fun. humble, also humble and honest. He's but humble too. He would just go. I, I mean, it. I like, take pictures, and then I get to practice editing. Like it'd be fun. Yeah, like, that's I, basically what it is. It's just fun. Yeah, it is, and it's about yeah doing that and letting other people come into your life who also want to be involved in that. And I think as we, I don't know if I uh, if I made my video too corporate. It's like people don't want to come be a dollar sign in my life. Like they want to come be a part of a creative process. And the more I can give you that, the more I'm going to find people who will pay me, so I can make a living. But like I. I, one flaw I see in other of my, I don't know, peers, competitors, other people in my universe is like, uh, when I'm talking to other bands, I'm really interesting to ask like, Hey, you worked with so-and-so. What did you think of that? Like the, one of my favorite answers I've ever got back is that someone brought snacks to set. And it's one of those, like, I never would have thought of that as a director, but like, yeah, we're going to be here for just eight hours. If I can bring a couple bags of chips and some Gatorades, like that goes a long way into making a good product or making a good memory for you guys. Uh, and the other part of that is the, one of the more common complaints I hear is like, I feel like a dollar sign. I didn't feel like a person. I didn't feel like an artist. I didn't feel like an idea. I felt like uh, I felt like I was a, a product that he was able to sell and move on with his life. Yeah. Uh, and so to me, it's like, yeah, the more I'm able to not do that. And I don't think that is me. I hope it's not me. I hope it never seems that way. Uh, but to me, it's like, yeah, I just want to make stuff. I'm happy making stuff. And I think the more I've done that, the more I've found people like you guys and people like Jay, the half-hearted guys who are like, yeah, we're just going to make stuff. That's just what's going to happen here. <laughs> and yeah. whoever's in the room when I'm doing it, great. If no one's in the fucking room, I'm going to keep making it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. like I thought about it on the other way, uh, like on the way over here where I was just, like, I had the realization, I'm like, Peter's probably one of the, like, the most perfect people to like be a part of this thing because I, we've known each other for a short time, but like I've never once seen you like even close to bummed yeah. or like down it's always just you're here and you're like let's just do the thing let's have a good time like yep. everything is up lit. like let's go like whether we're working or we're just hanging out at yep. sean's or we're at a show it's always just like yo what's up like everything is just like yeah oh peter's having I've, peter doesn't have bad days yeah. like i'm sure you do but like you don't yeah bring that around so it's yep. just like oh you're just the perfect person to be I like a part that. of this so like it's just one of those things where yeah it's you're you don't treat people like dollar signs like you make sure everybody feels like people 
Yeah. Where it's like, cool, we're going to make a cool thing because that's the right thing to do. Like, that's what it comes down to is like, we want to be, we want to make art. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yep. People have, there has to be money transacted because people have to pay for things. But like, mm-hmm. that doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, it's, that's second. Yep. Like, we'll worry about that. But like, let's just do the damn thing. Yeah. And make it as good as it can be. Yeah, for yeah. everybody. I I appreciate that. I think for me, it's I've uh, <laughs> I think I've had all my bad days, or I've had my fair share of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And my yeah. my quick summary there that I've never quite gotten into on the podcast is that like through high school, I'm an athlete. We talked about the soccer last time, and that gets derailed by concussions, and so I end up missing like a year of school total, uh, and just sitting in a dark room staring at a wall for a year. And it's like no one has any hope for me. No one has any idea. And then that culminates with me going like, I want to play soccer, but like medically, I'm not cleared. No doctor in their right mind would. But I'm going to start working out. I'm going to do this. And I think this is where, like, the hard-headedness that I was referencing earlier comes in. It's like I had no right to play soccer, but I decided I'm not going to sit in this dark room anymore. I'm going to start running, and I'm going to go from running a quarter mile at the start of the summer to being the most fit kid on my team at the end of the summer. And to me, it was one of those, like, oh, I don't need anyone. I'm just going to do this all myself. And, of course, doing it all myself has done well for me in the context of building a business. But it's short-sighted and stressful and not perfect and that's part of where the something from everyone comes in of like yeah i don't have to be on my own team like i it's important to be strong-willed and, but yeah as we're talking about having no bad days it's like no i think i just sat in my dark room for so long that it's like oh this is rock bottom and anything above this is so far above rock bottom right, that yeah. like even a bad day is like it's a damn good day because i'm at least not sitting in a fucking prison of sorts right yeah. um so I appreciate that. And I think that, yeah, the blind euphoria thing makes sense to me. It's something I can attach to of like, yeah, I, I agree that there is some blind euphoria to life. Like it's it's not all going to be perfect. And if you mm-hmm. look too hard, you might not see the euphoria. But to some yeah. part, it's like, yeah, close your eyes and be happy because generally things are better than than they could be. And, yeah. And of course, I'm uh, maybe privileged to have that stance now that things are better where I recognize that, yeah, there's a an alternate version of me that never got out of that dark room and things don't seem like they could but, be any better. But like, yeah. Well, it's it's crazy you say that because I was thinking about it too and the, the whole butterfly effect of, yeah. of things. Because if two very certain things don't happen in my life, I don't know if I ever meet Ryan, which in yep. turn means I don't know if I'm ever even here. Sure. Because I was going through a really dark time in my, you know, I, I had anxiety and depression from like age four, basically. And I know it was like a chemical imbalance in my brain. It's like a, a my grandmother had a history of it. So I, I just kind of know, like I, I it was yep. given to me. Yep. I, I can analytically look at my depression and realize kind of mostly where it comes from. And I kind of became a recluse and uh, a friend one night was like, Hey, I was probably like 21, 22. He was like, Hey, I'm going to go to this random party and not like a crazy, like we're all drinking, smoking yeah, kind yeah. of party, but just sort of like a, Hey, everyone's getting together. Yeah. And like he ha- he didn't know like, half these people. I don't think he was just like, Hey, you should come with me. It's like up in the boondocks. And, um, we went there and again, this is me being in my house for months, not going out or anything and just being like, I, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I don't want to be out kind of thing. And he dragged me there and two people were playing guitar and it's kind of where I came up with this connection to actually, they were playing guitar on a table and they were singing an all time low song oddly enough. And oh, I was and praying it was gonna be the fun it, song. Th- no, <laughs> no. And, and I, I just went up to them and started singing with them. Didn't know who they were. And one of them ended up being this person, Corey, that me and Ryan know. And then me and Corey became friends Yep. and ended up doing music. And then like, it was like a small thing. Didn't really end up being a thing. And then two years later or whatever, Corey hits me up. Is like, hey, you still like doing music? Are you around to do music kind of thing? And I was like, yeah, I, I got time. I just changed jobs. Like I just left like the most toxic job, nine to five job I've ever had in my life. And I have more free time. Fuck yeah, I want to do some music and got together. It like worked out pretty well. And then the very first show, I meet Ryan. So it's like, it's weird. The butterfly effect of stuff yeah. where like there's an alternate version of me that doesn't leave my bedroom. Yep. That is probably still there to this day, just dealing with depression and anxiety. And I still deal with that stuff, but like, it's a different, you know, yeah. you, you handle it differently. So the butterfly effect is, in, is insane in that case. We're like, there is a different version of me somewhere that never met Ryan and yeah. never met all, you know, I'm not in chain twist. I'm not, yeah. I don't, who knows what I'm doing right now. It, it's, it's crazy how one little event can like change. hundred percent. You know? Yeah. When I'm finally like getting in shape to play soccer, I was a meeting with my doctor and my doctor basically goes like, 
listen, I can't medically recommend this, but I understand that like as a human being, if I don't give you this opportunity, then you're going to be stuck in this place of bubble wrap of like, oh, I can't do anything anymore. Yeah. And it's a similar thing of like, yeah, medically, he probably shouldn't have cleared me. Medically, he probably should have been like, listen, I know you want to. And I know it, as an 18 year old, this seems like your whole life. But like as an adult, I cannot co side you stepping back into harm's way, given all this bullshit that we've been through so far. And it's like, thank goodness for that guy. And I don't, I didn't love that doctor for a lot of other reasons, but that is one thing I think he did great by me is like, he recognized that like medically this might not be perfect, but like as a, as a soul, I needed that. Um, and yeah, that success, that confidence, I think then gives me the, the confidence to go out and try running my own business of like, oh, I can do something. If I, even if I'm starting at what feels like the most zero baseline it's like yeah just put time in put effort in and make that a a priority every day and yeah you can you can change your life in ways that aren't really plausible at that day yeah um so yeah it's interesting how those those little moments can sometimes come back to us yeah uh, and lead us all here with a new shirt in front of us hell yeah dude yeah. um fire we're just about to our hour um uh, I want to touch on the Chain Twist show very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got a show coming up February 10th in Wallingford. Uh, I guess my question for you guys, or the one I wrote down here, is like, what makes this better or different than past Chain Twist shows? And I guess part of the question there is like, is there something as you look back at the, the couple shows you've played, is there something you look back and go, fuck, like, I think the show's all went great. I'm sure on stage there's always a sense of like, someone was a little out of time. Something was a little slow. Something didn't quite feel right. Like, is there something we're actively working to optimize as we go into the next show? You want to take this one? I mean, we're always trying to be better because, like you said, yeah. like there's always something that can be fine-tuned. Yeah. Leading into this show, um, we kind of touched on it last time I was on where we have a new song that we're trying to work out and insert into the set list so it's not going to be the same set list that we've been playing. Mm -hmm. We've been fiddling with the idea of possibly, like, you know, reworking order of songs and everything. So redoing, Dan's going to probably do, like, the little interludes in between stuff, kind of just rehashing things because – it's not getting boring, but like, at least for us, like playing the same thing at practice all the time, like it's cool to just kind of like bounce some stuff around. And if yeah. you have been coming to in the shows and seen us multiple times, you're watching the same thing every time. It's the same songs, the same order, the same in between. So like even like the the talking in between, like it's all the same thing. You're watching a just rehashed version of what happened last time we played. So it's constantly just fine tuning, getting tighter as a band. Like Josh is always coming up with new things, like to play on guitar like joe will come more guitar new, spins more guitar spins <laughs> joe will come with you new know. bass stuff so like the more we play these songs the more it becomes that muscle memory thing where you're yeah. like oh let me like free ball this idea like let me try this out and see how this works so it's constantly just evolving on itself um but yeah more specifically like we want to, we're aiming to have at least one new song that may or may not be out i guess it should release. be at least out audio wise yeah like we're talking about whether we want to just release the audio on spotify and everything and then worry about the video after so they don't have to be like tied together yeah but we're trying to figure all that out but yeah the main thing is we're trying to figure out the new the new song is there anything like specific to your instruments like i as i'm learning drums <laughs> what i'm slowly realizing is like how much freedom there is within songs to like not play the parts uh, and so I'm curious, like, are you guys, yeah, as as a guitarist, as a vocalist, and as a drummer, like, are there parts of the set that you're looking at going, like, ooh, could I play this fill differently? Could I change this? Or is there a part of, like, uh, yeah, as a guitarist, as a vocalist, is there a, a note that you're trying to hit? Like, what is, is there a, a personal metric of growth that is, like, yeah, for Chain Twist, let's get tighter, let's get better as a unit, but as a as a, as Josh, as Ryan, as humans who are sitting at their own stations, like, is there a, a little piece that you're focused on improving? Yeah, I every every practice, I think I change what I play just slightly every single time, just sure. to see if there's something that works different, mm -hmm. that, like, if I play this here, can I be crazier on stage? Can I, yeah. uh, does it make the next part easier for me to play? Like the new song we recorded, uh, the thing about being, um, you know, a vocalist and a guitarist is like, what can I play and sing at the same time? And I, I feel like I'm pretty good at designing like things that I can play and sing at the same time. And yeah. I, that's why I always wanted to do was like learn how to do both at the same time. But this new chorus, when it was reworked uh, with Sean um, from Half Hearted, like when we did it, we we kind of like wrote it in the studio, changed it. I sang it. And then after singing, I was like, this is not a chorus that we ever played beforehand. Mm -hmm. So just even trying it the other night, I was like, oh, this is the notes I'm singing 
my brain trying to play this on guitar is also like this is going to be a learning curve kind of yeah. thing like and normally i've like me and dan when it comes to vocal stuff kind of figure out like let's never put ourselves in a situation where we're like have to trick our brains but also let's make sure it's like interesting but yeah yeah i'm always constantly trying to go and like look at which guitar part can I play here that makes me one of a better stage presence, but also makes it easier on me? Or is this something that more fun for me to play? Because yeah. to us, I always want the show to be a spectacle. I want people to see us and go like, holy shit, what are these guys doing? Why are they doing that? Why is that guitarist doing that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah. that is the key. Yeah. yeah. Free behind the kit. Yeah. What is yeah. what's something you're working on? What is there a part of the set? Is there a part of the song? Is there a fill that you always fumble through? But yeah. What are you working on? Yeah. There's constantly parts where... It's like, can I add just a little extra flair to it? I mm. think I every time where I practice, it might be everybody's goal and no one says it, but like in my head, at least I'm like, I'm going to do this time around. I'm going to try this thing. And if I can get one person to like look at me and go, what was that? Like while we were playing, then <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, cool. Okay. Like it's like everything, every time we yeah. play, it's like. Josh will do something or Dan, like someone to do something and I'll like look up while playing and be like, yo, that was sick. That's Let's do one. that. Like yeah. that's yeah. the one. Um, so it's constantly kind of like tweaking things and the, ex the chemistry experiment of how far can you push something where it's not the thing anymore because yep. you need to keep, especially with all the songs already recorded and like out, like you can't change too much. But there is the creative freedom where you do not have to play the exact blueprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a different fill, like constructed differently or different symbols or whatever it may be, it's constantly just kind of tweaking it to keep it fun for you, interesting to listen to, and not um, not take over. Because I think especially as a drummer, it's important to understand where – your time is i guess there's times where not a lot of stuff is happening and it's appropriate to maybe step the drums up a little bit but then there's also times where it's not a lot is happening for a reason don't be showy don't yeah. be busy because you're taking away the more you do on drums the more you're taking away from everybody else in your band so it's like i want to have fun and i want to show people that i'm a good drummer but like a lot of the times being a good drummer is people not noticing yeah that you're playing yeah. like just be in the pocket it takes way more skill to be a pocket drummer than to like do all these crazy fills and stuff so it's knowing what to do and what not to do yep that makes me feel better i'm only a pocket drummer because i'm not You're the best drummer on earth Peter. <laughs> i'm a metronome dude you are the best drummer on earth <laughs> i only know one beat and i'll play that shit in four four till i die it worked for it AC might be DC. 60 bpm might be 100 bpm it'll be somewhere it worked for AC DC. it'll work for you <laughs> but they're my gods um Hell yeah, Kings. That feels like a great place to to call us call us a shit. So, uh, Blind Euphoria new collection is out now. Uh, BlindEuphoriaCo.com. Correct. Yep. Fire. We got shirts up there. We got beanies up there. We got stickers up there. Uh, we got a letter from you, which I really like as a, a cool little detail. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's always something I'm trying to figure out. I was like, how do I make this more personal? How do I yeah. uh, further convince you that I'm only working for you? And I like the handwritten. Yeah, well, note that was the a, idea where like just to not drag it out more, but like what you're saying, it's like you're not a dollar sign to us. It's yeah. like we see your order come in. Genuinely yeah. appreciate that you've. We bought genuinely from us. Yeah. appreciate yeah. that you spent your hard-earned money, especially yeah. nowadays. Like you spent money on us. We see your name come through, and we're like, yeah. that's a person yeah. who consciously saw something and was like, this is sick. I want to contribute to this. Or even literally, there's so many things I would buy, and I'm just too lazy to go get my wallet from the other room. <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah. so many little so things. Like, that's that's the, thing too, the fact yeah. that you were willing to go through. Like I have to yeah. type my credit card number in. <laughs> yeah. What's my PayPal password? <laughs> yeah. Like all these things, like you yeah. took all those steps because you like the shirt yeah. enough. Like the least we can do is try to reciprocate yep. some token of appreciation where we can write out yeah. rather than just like you get a confirmation email that we can put like, thanks. Yep. And like literally like we can write, thank you, insert name, like yep. to you yeah. for this. And it's, and I will say too, every letter I do is different. I yep. don't have a yeah. copy and paste thing. I legitimately like think it out and like write something different to each person yeah. and like maybe have like a cool little like message of like you know like a little positive thing or something Hell but yeah i know yeah, i don't want to ever be the same and feel corporate like i, I could at least get a stamp and do it but that's not fun i like to just like hand write it out and everything even though my right handwriting sucks but and that's where i think it's sweet waters company that sends candy with all yeah. their orders and it's a yeah, similar yeah. thing but yeah how do we just 
make sure you remember us. And also make sure that we yeah. know, yeah, that you know that we care about you. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think our, our goal then for Blind Euphoria is to make your letter writing hell. <laughs> I want you to sell <laughs> so many shirts that these letters we become Josh real. Have carpal tunnel. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. I would uh, love to get carpal tunnel. If that's how I get it, I would love it to be because I have to write handwritten messages to everyone. That hell would yeah. be fantastic. Hell yeah. That's the goal. Let's get Josh carpal tunnel. <laughs> Blind Euphoria is that Hashtag carpal tunnel. Carpal fun. tunnel, Josh. <laughs> hell yeah, Kings. Uh, so blinduphoriaco.com. We're going to go find some online. Uh, where do they follow you online? Josh, we'll start with you. Where do they follow you online? Where do they, people check you out? Where can they tell you that you were awesome today? Uh, my Instagram is Joshua X Roy. That's basically all I'm on because social media stresses me out. And Perfect. then you, I also half run the Blind Euphoria uh, Instagram and the Chain Swiss one too. Yeah. yeah Perfect. Basically. Yeah. Ryan underscore a bear on Instagram. I'll mess around on Twitter, I guess, but who cares? Yeah. Um, yeah. Chain Twist underscore Blind Euphoria Co on Instagram. Pretty much Instagram. Are you all on TikTok yet? Not for Blind Euphoria. No. I mean, Chain Twist has an Instagram, uh, TikTok, but like, I don't know how to do a TikTok for a me band. Me neither. It all so, stresses me out so yeah. much. Yeah, man. like <laughs> I, I try to do, I, me and Dan pretty much take over like the Chain Twist stuff for, as far as internet goes because mm -hmm. Joe's an adult and it stresses Josh out. <laughs> so like we do, Joe has kayaks to work yeah, on. Yeah, Joe's got, yeah, whatever. <laughs> He's got a house to build. Um, But yeah, so we have a Chain Twist TikTok. Yeah. It's like dumb memes, basically. Yep. For the most part, so. every day I don't use TikTok. I kick myself, going, "Fuck, I'm yeah. missing out." But I just, but I don't know how yeah. to do it as a band. Yeah. Like yeah. so, it's my there. mental health is better for not doing it. So. Yeah, <laughs> mine's exactly. shit because I do. Yeah. So follow it and make me feel better about it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Chance was blind euphoria. Me, if you care, I get it. If you don't. <laughs> what he said. perfect well yeah. i think people should care uh, and if they do care then yeah please go tell the guys they did awesome uh, i appreciate you guys being like open and vulnerable i think that's one of the things that i go only thing i know how to do <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping it's the vulnerable part not it's the open part uh, no i appreciate that i think as i go back through episodes and as i reflect on episodes of the ones i've enjoyed the most are the ones where i felt like people were very forthcoming and vulnerable and willing to be open and honest about but the, the nitty gritty and the glamorous and I think yeah so much of our lives isn't as glamorous as we want to make it seem so yeah, I appreciate when people not. can come on here and be candid about yeah about where they're at so I appreciate you guys sharing stuff I think it's yeah good for me to hear and hopefully someone listening can also derive some value from it um, yeah. so for those folks listening yeah leave leave these folks some positive feedback let them know they're adorable and that you want to hear more from them uh, go buy Blind Euphoria I'll be wearing it fucking every day of my life if I can <laughs> send me a hate comment if you want to it's all the same algorithm doesn't know can't read um yeah <laughs> Send the hate comments to Ryan. <laughs> let him figure that out. Um, okay. Ryan, I need to let you take us out of here on some great theory of yours. So we talked about how the Grand Canyon isn't real. We talked about the algorithm isn't real. I feel like you've asked, I don't want the cutting edge of bullshit coming out of your mouth. Yeah, what is what is a great place oh, to leave man, folks what on? Can I, what can I randomly think of right now? Yeah, I'll um, put you on the spot as hell. But oh like, God. there's. I mean, I can elaborate. Yeah, so I just, I'm really big on conspiracy things because I think life sometimes is boring. And <laughs> if we choose to not believe stuff. I'm so scared about what's going to happen here, but I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, you've opened up. It's going to be nothing bad. Um, no, I just think it's more fun to like believe like really far fetched things because like there's part of me I don't believe it either, but it's just more fun. Okay, give like me the, the fun. Mi Miami aliens thing. Like obviously Please. it's not real, but like isn't it a little fun to just be like, what if aliens were at the Miami like mall? No. Just things like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, to elaborate on my Grand Canyon ending last time, this is for I don't care whatever. Um, no, I just make stuff up sometimes because it's fun and I have this reputation of having this. So, yeah. like, I made this one up. This isn't real. But I started saying that the Grand Canyon has been artificially extended. Okay. Um, the natural Grand Canyon is a thing and um, is hiding all the government secrets. <laughs> and the government needed to have that. So to distract people from it, that's why there's all the don't hike past this point things because that's where it all is. And if they dug a second Grand Canyon, <laughs> that'd be too obvious to planes and stuff. Like like flying over, you'd see it. So they just artificially extended <laughs> the main one, which is where all the tourist viewpoints are. So you're just anymore. looking at the Grander Canyon instead of the Grand Canyon and whatever, dude. And like, it's just fun. Hell yeah. BlindEuphoriaCo.com. That's a great place to wrap up, folks. Thanks for joining us. Episode 54, something for everyone. Maybe 53, depending on what happens this week. I'm just coming, We're never going to have another episode. <laughs>